Welcome to the City of Bakersfield Planning Commission meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern, and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 10 a.m. The agenda for this meeting can be downloaded at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, Vice Chair Zach Bashertash. Good evening. It is my pleasure to call to order the April 6, 2023 Planning Commission meeting. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Chair Cater. Vice Chair Bashirtash. Here. Commissioner Biddle. Here. Commissioner Komen. Here. Commissioner Lomas. Here. Commissioner Neal. Here. Commissioner Wade. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you for attending tonight's Planning Commission meeting. The commission provides an opportunity for public participation in the development process throughout the city of Bakersfield. The Planning Commission considers a wide variety of projects including subdivision maps, zone changes, general plan amendments, and more. When applications are received, the city planning division uh, analyzes the request. Planning staff will present the facts about the project along with their recommendation to the Planning Commission who will approve the item or make a recommendation as appropriate. Madam Clerk, next item please. Agenda item 3A, public statements. Does anyone in the audience wish to address the commission regarding items listed on tonight's agenda? If you are here for non-consent public hearing items 6A through 6F, this is not the time to speak. You will be given an opportunity to speak when those items are called later in the meeting. Non-agenda item 3B, public statements. Does anyone in the audience wish to address the commission regarding items not listed on tonight's agenda? If so, please come forward and state your name. Seeing none, Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item four, consent calendar items. All matters listed under the consent item do not require a public, public hearing and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of said items unless staff or commissioner requests specific items be discussed and or removed for, for separate action. May I get a motion proving the consent items? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Neal. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Biddle. Please cast your vote. Can we just do an audible vote? Uh, Vice Chair Bashir Tash? Yes. Commissioner Biddle? Yes. Commissioner Komen? Yes. Commissioner Lomas? Yes. Commissioner Neal? Yes. Commissioner Wade? Yes. Motion passes with Chair Cater absent. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item five, consent public hearings. Now is the time for consent public hearing items. If the item is not removed by a commissioner, staff, or a member of the public, the commission will vote on all items in one motion without further com comment. If an item is removed, it will be placed at the end of the non-consent public hearing items. At this time, I will open all of the consent public hearing items. It is any member of the public wish to remove a consent, a consent public hearing item? Does any commissioner or staff wish to remove a uh, consent public hearing item? At this time, the consent public hearing items not removed are now closed. May I get a motion to adopt staff's recommendation on the consent public hearing items not removed, incorporating all staff Miranda and revised staff recommendations. I'll make a motion to approve item 5A. Thank you, Commissioner. I'll second that. Thank you. 
Please cast your votes. Is it still broken? Yeah, we can still do a voice vote. Vice Chair Bashir Tash? Yes. Commissioner Biddle? Yes. Commissioner Komen? Yes. Commissioner Lomas? Yes. Commissioner Neal? Yes. Commissioner Wade? Yes. Motion passes with, with Chair Cater absent. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item six, non-consent public hearings. Now is the time for non-consent public hearing items. Before we begin, I want to explain how the hearing will be conducted. Because the proposed subdivisions are six uh, contiguous vested tentative track maps involved in the, uh, involve the same engineer sub, subdivider pro and property owner, we are conducting one hearing for all six extensions of time. Staff will first give a report then. Those in favor of the extensions all will be allowed to speak. Those in opposition to the extensions of, the time will be, of time will be able to speak after all of those in favor have spoken. Each side will be given five minutes to provide rebuttal comments. Uh, individual speakers may not ask questions during their statements, but the questions will be answered until the public hearing on that item is closed. Written comments may be given to the clerk who will provide copies to the commission. Please be respectful of others participating in the hearing by not repeating the remarks of the previous speakers and presenting any new comments or thoughts in a concise and clear manner. Uh, Mr. Johnson, would you please provide us with your staff report? Yes, thank you, Vice Chair. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to invite uh, Courtney Camps. Courtney Camps, she is one of our Associate Planner Twos with our department. She'll be presenting tonight. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Good evening, my name is Courtney Camps. I am an Associate Planner with the Development Services Department. I'm here to present items 6A through 6F, extension of time for vesting 10 of track map numbers 6839 through 6844. Yes. The project, is, the project is located south of the Rio Bravo Country Club development, east of future Chase Avenue. The request to, is to receive a three-year extension of time for vesting tentative track map 6839 through 6844 that allowed 564 single-family residential lots, one multifamily lot, drainage basins, drill sites, and open space lots on approximately 317 acres for purposes of single family residential development and multifamily development. August 3rd, 2006, the Planning Commission approved vesting tentative track map numbers 6839 through 6843. August 17th, 2006, Planning Commission approved vesting tentative track map number 6844. Between 2008 and 2015, these maps received all the automatic extensions given by the state legislature. March 2nd, 2023, the final three-year extension of time was scheduled for consideration by your commission. Correspondences were received and are addressed in the staff report. The applicant was unable to accommodate a continuance, so the project was referred back to staff and was re-advertised for this meeting. No additional public comments have been received in response to the public hearing notice for this meeting. Staff recommends approval of extension of time for vesting tentative track map numbers 68 through 6, 6839 through 6844. That concludes my presentation of the project. Thank you. Thank you. The public hearing is now open. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the extensions of time? Please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Uh, Brandon Martin, for the record, B-R-A-N-D-O-N-M-A-R-T-I-N. Uh, Vice Chair Bashertash, uh, distinguished members of the commission and staff. Now, let me begin by uh, thanking uh, Chris Boyle, who I don't see here tonight, but he was very instrumental in making sure that we're in a position to bring uh, this quality housing project to the city of Bakersfield, as well as uh, Planning Director Paul Johnson. Uh, there, it's always, uh, I don't think we say it enough, but we do very much appreciate city staff and their role. Uh, I think I'd like to share three reasons why I think this extension makes sense from a greater policy level, uh, and then we can hear from uh, the developer himself, Mr. Ed Coyne, who's come here as well as uh, Macintosh & Associates, which is the local civil engineering firm, if you need any precise details. Uh, 
we went to law school because we're not that great at math, so Macintosh helps a lot with that. <laughs> um, first of all, the reason is, is, number one, is that it's a great mix of, of housing that our community really needs right now. Uh, you got housing that's uh, low income or not affordable housing, but uh, housing that uh, people who uh, are working in our community can look forward to enjoying. You got quite a few multi-family uh, residential units that are part of the map. And then you have premium housing that's got great views of the, uh, on the foothills of the, uh, the Kern Canyon and the city of Bakersfield. Um, it's a very good mix, and I'm not sure you'd get the same mix in the market environment today. I remember this was approved in the euphoria of 2006. Uh, today we have a very different market, so we should take advantage of that. Um, the second is that we've got infrastructure improvements uh, that we'd likely not be able to get otherwise that are front-loaded. Uh, Mr. Coyne is going to build um, from Comanche to Breckenridge a much needed road that I think the, the people who live in the area right now uh, at the Rio Bravo Country Club, as well as future development, will benefit from greatly in terms of traffic impacts. Uh, the th third thing I wanted to talk to you about tonight, and maybe I'll reserve it uh, in case there actually is any opposition, uh, is just that this is an environmentally sound project. Uh, it's been CEQA certified. The EIR was certified back in 2006, but it was quite a bit ahead of its time. And Mr. Coyne has agreed to make this a zero emission project. Again, uh, something that's impressive even today. So uh, I hope that you'll consider uh, a moment to hear from Mr. Coyne about his vision for the project. Thank you. Thank you and good evening, commissioners. Um, I, I just have a sh very short statement. You know, uh, I've been consistently working. Sorry to interrupt you. Please state your name for the. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. My name's Ed Coyne, and I'm the managing partner of Estates at Rio Bravo Limited Partners. Um, I have been consistently involved with this project since the inception. Uh, back in 2004, we annexed the property into the city. We had an annexation agreement with the city, and the purpose was clearly laid out there that we were going to do this same project that's before you today. Um, one of the processes that we went through was extensive with the Rio Bravo homeowners community. Uh, there were about six homeowners associations over there, and there were many, many private meetings. And the way that we worked out road extensions was very important to them at that time. And these are the front end loaded infrastructure items that uh, Brandon Martin was mentioning. There's a road that comes uh, from the southern extremity of Miramonte Drive and enters, is extended and enters into our project area. There's also a connection from the termination of Miramonte Drive uh, to Chase Avenue, <clears throat> and that Chase Avenue runs all the way over to Comanche. And that's about nearly a half a mile road that's off site that we'll be building. Uh, the other main road is Chase Avenue that starts at the end of Miramonte Drive and then runs all the way down to Breckenridge. And most of these are front loaded. The last extension down to Breckenridge uh, would be um, built in the future when there are, I think, 300 uh, homes constructed. So that is, oh, so my vision for the project is just to keep going with what we've been doing. Uh, we had to work with dozens of homeowners in order to get the right of way for those uh, roadways. That took many years. It was quite a long and frustrating process. Um, we also had to deal with the great global recession that started in 2008 and ended just in time for COVID, I'm afraid. Um, you know, so we've also had a pandemic to deal with, uh, but we've been sticking with this and we have uh, some time ago enlisted Macintosh and Associates to do the planning for us, prepare the final maps and prepare the grading plans and get everything moving. We've done market studies recently. We've done uh, um, a lot of marketing with uh, towards financial institutions that will help us to finance this. So it's a live project. It's something that we really want to get going. Um, it's designed to be compatible with the Rio Bravo golf course community uh, because of all those hearings and meetings that we, we had there. So um, 
anyway, I hope we can get this project approved tonight so that uh, we can continue our process. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wants to speak in favor, support? Seeing none, is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the extension of time? Please step to the microphone and identify yourself and proceed. Uh, thank you and good evening. My name is Tony Bell, B-E-L-L. -L. I'm a resident of the Rio Bravo development within 300 feet of this project. Um, thank you for the opportunity to address you. I'll be brief. I did read the commission's, the, the staff report, and I read Mr. Martin's letter to you. Uh, Mr. Martin, or to the uh, city attorney and to Mr. Boyle, uh, Mr. Martin talks about a common sense exception to the requirement of a CEQA report. Uh, I, I would submit to you that common sense should not be the exception. It should be the rule guiding your decisions. What we have here is 564 units, which dwarfs the 377 units in Rio Bravo. To say that's not a project defies common sense. It's a project. The environmental report upon which the original approval was granted was done in 2005. Common sense tells you that's stale. We're almost 20 years past. And if I could correct something that Mr. Coyne just told you, he said there's six HOAs in Rio Bravo. Well, that's not true. There's now 13. Most of Rio Bravo was not constructed at the time of the original approval, including my home. So, what I'm asking for is not that you say the project can't be built or say that it can't be built in the amount that the developer wants to build it. What I'm saying is that you should ask, you should require a current environmental report. That's all. We're going on 20 years now. Yes, we had a recession in 2008, but it didn't last until the pandemic. This project, were it going to be built, could have been built a long time ago, but it hasn't, and here we sit. And if you give them another three years, we're going to be in 2026. So we're going to have a 21-year-old environmental report on this project. And so my request of the commission is just that you require a current environmental report that takes into account all the people that have moved to Rio Bravo since 2004. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? Please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Good evening. I'm Eddie Lane. I'm with the Sierra Club. I'm speaking tonight, this afternoon, on behalf of the Sierra Club, and specifically on behalf of our Vice Chair, Gordon Nip, who communicates regularly with the city. We can argue about whether it is legal to approve the time extensions, but the more important question, is it the right thing to do? How will it affect our community and our world? Number one is air pollution. A recent Guardian article ranked Bakersfield as the number one most air polluted place to live in the United States. 31% of the children in Kern County have asthma. It is not the right thing to do to let new developments like this, this one make our air dirty even worse than it was with this outdated 2005 EIR. This sprawling development would, should mitigate its air pollution impacts to zero, like other projects have done recently. Number two, climate crisis. Urgent actions are needed to counter human-caused climate change, says a new report from the United Nations. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, humanity is on thin ice, and that ice is melting fast. Pope Francis recently said that climate change has brought our world to the limits of suicide. It is not the right thing to do to let new developments like this one make our planet's future even worse if you let it live with its old, this old, outdated 2005 EIR. If we care about the sort of existence our children and grandchildren will have, this development should, should be doing an updated, robust mitigation for, climate, for the climate crisis. Number three point, habitat loss. The current Metropolitan Bakersfield Habitat Conservation Plan expired on January 1, 2023 and is no longer in effect. Since the developer can no longer participate 
in the MBHCP that undermines any conclusion that the development's impacts on biological resources would be insignificant. The city is deferring the issue to the developer who may or may not contact federal and state fish and wildlife agencies to address special status species issues and habitat laws. None of us have any idea whether there are species and habitat issues, nor do we have any idea what mitigation might be required. It is not the right thing to do to make an uninformed decision on this important issue without knowing the impacts, what the impacts are, or without knowing what's met, what specific mitigation might be required or would be required. City staff say this is a common sense exemption. This insulates this project from CEQA. It seems to the Sierra Club that this, this would dictate that new developments like this should address issues like air pollution, we being the most polluted city in, the United, in America and it should address a climate crisis as we approach the limits, and should address the loss of habitat when the city no longer has a habitat conservation plan. Common sense should dict dictate a no to this project at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition of the extension of time? Does any commissioner have any questions for the public on this item? Remember, this is not a time to express any opinions on the matter. It's only a time to ask questions. Seeing none, is there anyone who wishes to provide a rebuttal on this item? If so, please be prepared to step to the podium. Each side will only have five minutes, so make your comments. Um, without repeating the remarks of previous speakers to ensure that everyone wishing to provide rebuttal comment has a chance to do so. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Basher Tash. This is Brandon Martin again. Uh, I just, there, I respect both uh, Mr. Eddie Lane and uh, Mr. Tony Bell, uh, and I just wanted to state that there, there is sort of a little bit of confusion here. This is a project that was already approved, uh, and the statute of limitations on CEQA has run. Uh, the question for you is just whether you'll give an extension of time, not whether you will reopen and look at the project again to see whether this should happen or not. Requiring a full EIR for mere extensions of time would be disastrous for our development community and is contrary to the, uh, frankly, to the, the development friendly and, and in, even in the environmental friendly uh, positions that your commission has taken in the past. I certainly don't want to see unnecessary reams and reams of paper as EIRs. I'm not sure you want to read them, but we have no changes in the project between the baseline which exists and is entitled today and what would happen after the extension of time. Uh, there is not a, a environmental issue here. Uh, again, this is a zero emission project. The EIR, which I'm not sure whether opponents have read or not, actually does mention global warming. It wasn't required under the guidelines at the time, but, but it, the consultant did go ahead and do an analysis of that. Maybe not the same one that we do today. Um, people who moved into the communities after this was approved uh, should have understand, or their realtors probably should have told them that this was an approved project. Uh, these were. Re recorded vested um, maps, and they have vested rights for my clients that should be respected. Um, I think that's all I really have to add, and I'd urge a vote in support of the extension of time. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name's Blaine Neptune. Uh, I'm with McIntosh and & Associates, and I just want to address one thing that was said about the uh, MBHCP program. Yes, it did expire, but the requirements that develop, the development community have to adhere to uh, are still the same. Prior to getting a grading plan, uh, a biological clearance survey has to be conducted. That biological clearance survey has to be submitted to all the state agencies. If there is something found, they're going to have to go through the state agencies now and get an incidental take permit. So everything that ha was done before uh, will still be done the same, it just may be a little bit more time consuming because we don't have the MBHCP program to help out. But there will be biological clearance surveys done and conducted and, uh, and submitted to the state agencies. Thank you very much. Thank you. About two minutes left if anyone else wants to. 
Seeing none, uh, you'll have an opportunity uh, opposition for about five minute rebuttal. Does anyone wanna speak in opposition? Go ahead and identify yourself one more time, please. Thank you, uh, Tony Bell, resident of the Rio Bravo development. Just, uh, I thought it was interesting the comment that the statute of limitations on CEQA has expired, and that's exactly the problem here. We are in a stale position now. You are not telling this, to, by denying the extension, you're not telling the developer that they can't build. You're just telling them to get a current EIR, taking into account the conditions now, the conditions both in my neighborhood and the open space that's next to it. So I appreciate your consideration, and I'd request a denial of the continuance or the uh, extension. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else? I will now close the public hearing on these items and return it to the commission for comment and action. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Mr. Coleman. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Pastor Tash. <clears throat> um, I, I have a couple of uh, comments about this project. Um, it is a great project. Um, the um, developer really needs to understand this is the last extension of time you have, and you got a lot of work to do by the time this runs out. And uh, you know, the, we're, we're, we've always been considered a developer-friendly community. And, uh, you know, a lot of communities don't have the, uh, uh, the options to renew these things for so long, irregardless of whatever the state did. And so, uh, you know, we're kind of in a position now where we're, we need the housing and we have developers that are sitting on maps. And uh, it, it's something that the city council is taking up, and uh, uh, I, I don't know that they're going to continue to be that generous in the future. Um, and, and if these maps expire, you know, the, the density is going to be required, and the, and the process is going to be very costly to the developer. So I, I really encourage you to uh, move expeditiously because uh, there's a lot of work. I was looking over the uh, the list of things that needs to be done is a lot. So, uh, to uh, to Mr. Bell and to Mr. Lane regarding the time on these, uh, the state came along during the 2008 housing debacle and granted developers that had existing approved maps the two five-year extensions of time. So that 10 years went by without us. And basically that is like absent time. So uh, it, it basically means that everything that was uh, in place just stays, it doesn't really age. So if you can just take that 10 years out of time. And so it's just like it's a seven year old project. And so uh, I think that our uh, EIR that was on this project was sufficient. Uh, there are some hoops that the developer is still going to need to go through in terms of habitat protection and those kind of things, which uh, 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 Mr. Nept Neptune uh, just talked about. Um, so I, I think that some of those safeguards are in place. Uh, uh, I support this project because we need housing. And, uh, and this is a good project in an area where we have a lot of maps approved and a lot of housing to be. And I think that it's like, what is it, the build it and they will come thing? <laughs> you know, that once we start building out there, I think more will come. And so uh, I support this project. I want to clarify, I support the extension of time because the project has already been approved. So, Thank you. Any other commissioner? All right. 
Well, this one's in my ward and out off the 178. We haven't seen too much development recently, but the housing's coming. I mean, if you drive out there, you'll see it and we definitely need it. What we need to see alongside it is grocery stores and amenities that make an area like yours a community. So it's not that we're deciding if this is going to go in or not. We're just giving them another three hour, three years to get their ducks in a row. So I would like to make a motion to approve the extension of time or what is it? Line items 5A through 5F. But, but 6 6. 6. 6A through 6F. Hold on. 6A through 6F. Ms. Lomas, you ask a question? If you don't mind, can I ask a question yeah. first? Okay, thank you. Um, to staff, and what would, are there any legal requirements in any shape, manner, or form that you would have to readdress the CEQA document? Not at this point, Commissioner Lomas. Um, for an extension of time, essentially, essentially it's not looking at the original EIR anymore because that was already approved. The project was already approved with the EIR. This is only for the extension of time. And so it's more of the process of the application for the extension of time that you're looking at today. Um, there could be a situation where you would review the, the EIR, but it would have to be because the project completely changes. If you're going from commercial to residential, um, that has happened in the past. And so it's required a new EIR. Would it be safe to, to, to say that the, the, the developer has certain rights with, it, with, these, with these maps? Yes, once a map vests, it vests with the policies and ordinances are in, that were in effect at the time that the, that the map vested. And so there's an opportunity to potentially make changes if there is a health and safety code situation. Um, but again, we're at a point where we're only addressing the extension of time. And in that same vein, um, with the state's pressure to build, mm -hmm. wouldn't we might cause a problem if we tried to interfere by, well, by denying and, and, and uh, um, giving Mr. Bell and Mr. Lane what they're asking for? I wouldn't want to speculate, um, but I would say that even if you do approve the, the extension of time today, the applicant will still have to abide by whatever other laws are in effect now. So if there's a new building code that needs to be followed, they'll have to follow that. If there's a new requirement from the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution District, they'll have to follow that. So it's, there, there are certain things that they're bound by based on the map that's been vested, but there are other requirements that will have to be met um, by the applicant. So we really don't have a lane to to um, to do this to to do what they're asking. So that's that's our opinion, Your Honor. Yes. Thank you. Is there any other comments, or would any other commissioner like to second Mrs. Biddle's motion? Yeah, I'll second Ms. Biddle's uh, motion. Mr. Cohen, thank you. Can we get a roll call? Vice Chair Bashir Tash? Yes. Commissioner Biddle? Yes. Commissioner Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Lomas? Yes. Commissioner Neal? Yes. Commissioner Wade? Yes. Motion passes with, com with Chair Cater absent. Madam Clerk, next item, please. If I may, Vice Chair, can I read the appeal period? Yes, absolutely, sorry. So decisions of the commission are subject to appeal by any person that believes they are adversely affected. The appeal must be filed in writing within 10 days from the date of the commission's decision. The appeal must be addressed to the city council and include the appellant's interest in or relationship to the project, identify the decision appealed, and address facts and reasons why the commission's decision should not be upheld. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item seven, communications. 
Does staff any, have any communications at this time? Uh, I guess I do. I would just ask um, the clerk, the secretary. Thank you. So there was a question at one of the previous planning commission meetings, and it was, uh, as we, the planning commission, are seeing zone change requests away from residential, does the city keep a tally of new sites that densify versus sites that go away so that we know if we're holistically adding housing versus subtracting housing? So the answer to that is yes, mostly. So we do track zone changes, general plan amendments in and out of residential. Uh, we track the acreage with that and we track residential track maps, such as what the extension of time that was just approved, and with that is buildable lots, so we know how many buildable lots are still in our inventory. What's hard to forecast on that, though, but although we do report annually to the state, are, for instance, single-family lots where there's an ADU or accessory dwelling unit built. So in other words, your commission may approve a track map for 100 lots, but in fact, if there's an ADU built on each of those lots, which we're seeing more and more, there are now 200 dwelling units and not just 100. Also, um, we, we can't really forecast conditional use permits for residential in the commercial zones. And mixed use commercial, such as in the downtown area, that is allowed by right. Um, so that's also harder to forecast. But again, we report that annually of what we do receive. So in trying to answer that question a little bit more specifically, we looked at a review period of the fifth cycle housing element, which is 2015 to 2023, which we're in right now. Uh, and there were some givens. Obviously, we know the zoning, we know the designation, and we know the max dwelling units allowed per acre. And with all the zone changes that occur, we know the acreage. So with that, we can extrapolate the maximum dwelling units. But one thing to keep in mind is typically Bakersfield or historically, I should say, Bakersfield has not built to maximum density, something we're trying to get away from. So we build to maximum density. So this is what we have, from residential to increased residential. Uh, there was 14 requests during this eight-year period. Uh, 11 of those requests were approved and three denied. And again, so this would be taking a property from R1 to R2 or R1 to R3 as such. Uh, and you can see on the right the maximum number of dwelling units that would have been provided above the baseline of the existing dwelling. So if there was 100 dwelling units allowed in the R1 and they went to an R3 zone, we were gaining 844 additional dwelling units with the zone changes that have gone through. From non-residential to residential, again, you can see the number of dwelling units. There was seven requests, all seven were approved. 74 additional acres of residential within the city during this time. And from residential to non-residential, 25 requests, you can see 23 were approved. You can see the, uh, the loss in dwelling units on the right. So to summarize that, the end result is really the bottom line of what you see there, and that's all of loss, which if you want to look at the last eight years, our mindset has changed on how we look at residential. Um, some of the commissioners that were on board in 2015 may recognize that zone changes were done um, almost at, at most all of them were approved. Uh, and now we're taking a little bit more closer look and seeing if these, if this, it is a good idea to change in and out of residential. And additionally, the state is looking at us more. So that is causing a different focus, which I anticipate in the upcoming six housing cycle, which um, Director Boyle discussed last meeting with the workshop, uh, we're gonna be taking an even harder look. So with that again, in the next upcoming years, you're gonna have to decide, you know, what, are, what is the best development? Is it uh, single family on large lots, single family on small lots, uh, a dormitory that you see there, CSUB, or apartments, or a mix of those? So I just, again, I just wanted to report back to that question. So yes, I think we're doing okay, and I think we will do better as we continue to move forward. Any questions? 
Thank you. Other than that, I would just say we do have a meeting on April 20th. Uh, and again, in two weeks, and we'll have a couple projects for your consideration then. Thank you. Thank you. Does have, uh, any commissioner have any comments at this time? No. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item eight, commission comments. Yeah, I missed that, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions at this time, commissioners? No? Um, Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item nine, adjournment. This meeting is adjourned at 6.10 p.m. Have a wonderful weekend.